Hey everybody, great to have you here. I'm very excited to share this, this new material with you, so stay tuned. All right, so this is the comping module. Uh, obviously, when you're gonna determine your after repaired value, ARV, knowing how to pull comparables and analyze that type of data is very important. So what I did here is usually what I'll do is, uh, now I have enough experience with comping that generally, um, unless the numbers are really tight and I'm not sure, I won't reduce it to a spreadsheet, but uh, this is a good tool that you can use. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking the example of a house that I just flipped, which is right here. And this is a house that I sold. So if we come here, and first thing you do is you, if you want to come up with an ARV, you have to figure out what house you're looking to come up, uh, you're looking to determine the ARV for. That's, that is your subject property. So you put the address here, the city, single family residential with the rule being only, you only compare single family residential to single family residential, not townhouse, not manufactured, not condo, not anything else. Um, also the style of the house, uh, ranch to ranch, uh, two story to two story, split level to split level. That's really the way you're going to do it to be as accurate as you possibly can. Also year built 2002. I want to stay within at least ideally five years here. Um, the newer it is usually anything built after 2000, I want to stay within five years, but I will go to 10 if I have to. Um, and as you can see down here for my comps, the other comps are within two or three years. So square footage, mine is 1193. Uh, this particular subdivision had a lot of comparable houses because the subdivision was built within two or three years. Three beds, two baths. Okay, no problem. So 1272, well, let's go to Sweet Grass, which is this one. So now how does this house compare to my subject? And if you look at the exterior, I mean, it's a ranch, it's, it's, it's very similar. So this is a good comparable. Vinyl siding, three bedrooms, two baths, 1166 square feet sold at 310. Um, so if we go back to our sheet, so what I'm gonna do is take the address, city, now it's within a quarter mile. Ideally, we want as close as possible. A quarter mile is great. We wanna stay within one mile with uh, single family residential flipping. Single family residential, 2004, 1166 square feet, 32. Uh, now I bought this house in August of 2022. So now one thing to note, generally we want to pull our comps within six months. Three months is great. More recent is great. The, the hard cap is at a year, but, but since our market is changing and prices are coming down, I want, if I'm gonna take risk on a flip, I want stuff that's as recent as possible. So what I did here is when I bought this house in August, we all knew that our um, our market was changing. So I'm going to show you the comp sheet that I had access to. All right. So there's 10 comps here. Anything that sold in 2021, I am going to admit. I'm going to omit. I'm not even going to look at it. Uh, not with a market change. So what I'll do here is when I get these series of comps, I'm going to anything from last year, I'm going to go ahead and omit that. And that's what I'm going to look for. What are the best comparables? Since this is a flip, I'm going to look for the three uh, the three houses that sold at the highest price, per, not only the highest price, but also the highest price per square foot. So that's how I selected the comps in my spreadsheet from this spreadsheet, from this, this grid here. So Sweetgrass, 2004, it sold on uh, August the 1st, 2022. So for 310, 265 a square foot. Second one was this house on Limewood right here. Okay, that one had a new roof, but it was very comparable. This one did have a much nicer yard. Um, now, if you scroll down and you're looking in here, all right, so they did a tile backsplash. I don't think that's granite. I think that's a Formica. Uh, the cabinets are nice. Um, it's comparable. Now they did tile out that shower, as you can see. So when, uh, they also have a barn door in here. So they have some nice upgrades. If we go back to, uh, 1272, generally when I'm looking at comps, I'm going to want to look, well, they don't have interior photos of this, unfortunately. So, um, I have to think to myself that if I want to get this 310 sales price, uh, for, or three, 310 sales price. I'm going to have to upgrade it to um, the scope that you saw with the backsplash and a nice shower. So, but let's go to this this third one because generally speaking, I'm looking for at least three. 
uh, three good comparables that give me some certainty uh, saying that I can sell this house in the low 300s. So let's go to this house on uh, topping. I just like the way Redfin is, is laid out. Um, I mean, if you prefer Zillow, you could use it, but I just happen to like Redfin's dashboard. That's just me. All right. So they got some, looks like there's some stuff in here that's dated, uh, but the cabinets are in reasonably good condition. It's not a lot of photos here. Um, so th now this is 1230 square feet. So this is larger. And the fact that it's larger will explain why it did sell at that 310. So what we have here is an average price per square foot of $260 per square foot. Now, the reason why I reduce it to price per square foot is to adjust for size. So my house, the house that I owned here is 1193 square feet. Obviously a house that's 1230 square feet or 50 square feet bigger would sell for more money. So to adjust to that, to compensate for that, you reduce it to a per square foot basis. Now, the average price that you see up here is this, the, all this is rolling up for the subject property. So this is my subject. Uh, the average is 311. Um, comp one, 265 a square. If I sold this house at 265 a square foot, I would get 317 at 264, 315, and 252, I'd get 300. So what this is going to do is give me a range. Um, now a note on the direction, the overall di direction of the market. Now, as you can see here, uh, now, uh, right here, let me come down. I sold this at 299, but that doesn't include the financial concessions that I made. So I actually sold this for a net of 295. Why? Well, last year, had this been the crazy appreciating marketing that we had, I would have been able to sell this probably at 325, but now the market is changing. So what I did was I spoke with my realtors who were on the front line and they know what, what's going on with their buyers. They are buying and selling lots of houses. So I got their feedback. We came to the consensus that given the direction of the market, an ARV of 299 was safe. Not 311, not 317, not 315, not 300. That is because of the overall direction of the market. Now, the fact that I sold this house at 295, uh, the roof was old. And just given the direction of the market, uh, if we look at some of the photos here, I was not comfortable completely gutting the kitchen, doing new cabinets, uh, paints, well, you know, new cabinets, uh, and then doing uh, tile shower in the bathrooms. I mean, that would make for a beautiful before and after, but given the direction of the market, I was not comfortable with that level of risk. Therefore, I was not willing to bring it up to the par of this house. Um, and to tell you the truth, had I done all this work, could could we have gotten two ninety nine? Maybe. Would there have been bidding over and above two ninety nine? I don't see any evidence to suggest that. Therefore, I did a very simple carpet paint punch list. Um, I did not remove the cabinets. I did not pull out the vanities. I did that tier one basic renovation carpet paint punch list that I talked to you about during the uh, repair estimate. So, um, but overall, the location, proximity to the subject property, quarter of a mile, that's great. They're all single family houses. They're all built within the same year. They're all approximately um, the same square footage or within a range of about 300 square feet of the subject three twos very recent sales and interestingly enough this is where they all this is where they all sold in so the takeaways here are you want to use those uh, best practices that i just discussed with you the fact that the market is declining means that i'm not if i if we have some comparables that are anywhere from the high 200s to the low threes I'm going to want to stay at 300 or less just to be in a, in a more affordable price point given the current interest rate climate. That's how I choose I chose to run this flip. I did spend 16,000 and I got 20 and change back. It was a su successful flip. It was good, but I was conservative with my numbers. So, let's look at another one. Let's look 